In the heart of Seuss Landing, where dreams dance and play, Circus McGurkus, we wonder, when will you light our way? With tents so tall and colors so bright, your magic is missed in the day and the night. But patience is a virtue in the land of Dr. Seuss's creation. We'll wait for the announcement with joy and elation. For when Circus McGurkus reopens with fanfare and delight, we'll be the first in line to bask in its glorious sight. There's no line. It's mobile order only. Hey friends, Circus McGurkis is finally reopening today. It has been closed for months. They've completely renovated the inside and it has a brand new menu. So today we're going to try everything and let you know what items are truly stupendous. Hello, my friends. Welcome, welcome. With a welcoming toot on my welcoming horn, our Circus McGurkis will promptly be dead. <laughs> The first item up is the Redfish Bluefish Poke Bowl. This contains blue glass noodles, ahi tuna, cucumber, edamame, mango, and a yuzu honey dressing. Something fun about this is we got told something magical happens when you pour the dressing on it. So um, yeah, let's see what that looks like. like. I don't know if it came through on camera, but the noodles went from like a deep blue to almost like a purpley color, so that was cool. I really like what Universal has been doing with their theming of the food lately. It's just, it's magical. But the only thing that really matters is how it tastes, so let's try it. Okay, I have to preface this by saying I love Poke Bowls. Um, I had my first one when we went to Hawaii, and I had one like every day, sometimes two. Okay, three sometimes, but that was, that was my limit. And this is the first one I've ever had that has noodles in it because most of them generally have rice. This one's really good. It does run on the sweeter side to me, so like the mango salsa, sweet notes, the noodles with the yuzu sauce, sweet notes, the edamame, sweet notes, and then tuna is kind of inherently sweet. So to me, it's like, it bleeds a little bit into the sweet side. I'm more of like a soy boy, I like some soy sauce on mine, my rice and soy sauce, but this is a terrific start. We switched seats because this is just, we've designated this the eating seat. So whoever's eating is going to be right here. Uh, so this is the pizza pasta. It's literally just mac and cheese with pizza toppings on it. Like, I love pizza. I love mac and cheese. There's no way that this is going to be bad. Like, as soon as I saw this on the menu, I was extremely excited about it. Like, my inner kid is, uh, is super happy. Oh, that looks so good. No surprises here. This is really good. After my first bite, my initial thought was, man, I wish there was more sauce. Cause like there's just a little bit sprinkled on top. And of course there's a layer of sauce and pepperoni on the bottom. So very good like proportions throughout this. And I think what we're learning is that pizza toppings just go well on carbs. Like you have pizza toppings on bread, which is like standard pizza. Then you can run over to green eggs and ham and you can get pizza toppings on tots, which is delicious. And now we have it on mac and cheese. Like pizza toppings apparently just go well on everything. So something they've done with this new menu is that each of the food items are themed to something in Seuss Landings. So like the poke bowl is like one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And then this burger right here is the Big Top Burger. So it's themed after Circus McGurkis. It's like a circus burger. Uh, so on this, you have a fresh beef patty, cheddar cheese, lettuce, tomato, and onion on a red brioche bun with curly fries. There's definitely some kind of like aioli or sauce on here as well. That's not on the menu, but that looks really, really good. Let's see how it is. Wimpy's might actually have some competition here. For a long time, we've said that Wimpy's has the best burger in the parks, but this one is really, really good. Like I'm actually pretty surprised. The patty itself tastes like, you can get a little bit of that like charred, like grilled taste. Normally at a theme park, like the burger patties you get, they just taste like a theme park burger patty. But every once in a while, like at Wimpy's and this one right here, it tastes like dad made it. Like dad pulled it off the grill himself. Also, the sauce I did a little 
you know, investigative work <laughs> when I ate it. It's definitely mayo ketchup. And like the fact that I enjoy mayo ketchup is the biggest plot twist of my entire life because for the longest time I hated mayo. I still hate ketchup, but you put them together and it's it's magic. Like I, even though we have a ton of other food left to try, I really just want to sit here and eat this entire thing. So something that I found exciting is here at Circus McGurkis, they don't just have themed food, they have a couple of themed drinks, and I'm a sucker for a themed drink. Like some of my favorite things in the parks are themed drinks. And the first one is a Sneelox Pink Lemonade. I like pink lemonade. I, I do have to say, I almost feel bad drinking it. Those little stars on top, wonderful. I don't know how people do that. Like I see people, like baristas, like doing the stuff with the coffee, you know? When I pour my milk in there, it just mixes. I, I don't get it, but let's try it. Yeah, it's just pink lemonade, which I think is like strawberry lemonade. I think that's what gives it its pink color. It's a mystery of the universe, really. Nobody nobody knows. Uh, I, somebody probably does, just not me. It's a mystery of my universe. But it's good. If you like pink lemonade, you're going to enjoy this. The foam topping is very tasty. Uh, I actually really enjoy that. It, it mixes up. It doesn't mix into the drink, so don't try that. But I think my favorite part is this crazy straw. I haven't drank out of a crazy straw in forever, and a crazy straw is just so Seuss landing, like Dr. Seuss. A little fun fact for you, in case you didn't know, there are apparently zero straight lines in Seuss landing. Even the trees are crooked. So, crazy straw fits that theme in perfect. Up next, we have another specialty drink, and that is the Ring Leader Rush. Listen, I don't want anybody in the comments talking about how this is a straight line. This is a cylinder. There's no straight line. Like, you could argue it's not a straight line. No straight lines in Seuss Landon. None. Except for maybe the crown molded. None. So we have let this one sit for a little bit. It's an icy. It's a blue raspberry icy. It was. It was a blue raspberry icy. Um, we've let it sit. Uh, it melts. It's Florida. It's hot. But it's fun. It's a fun way to drink an icy. I mean, I don't know if I've ever had an icy that wasn't fun. It's kind of like a jet ski. You can't have a bad time on a jet ski and you can't have a bad time drinking an icy. So up next, we have what I think is the prettiest dish of any of them, and that is the Tamed Dragon Salad. Uh, so this is red dragon fruit, red quinoa, raspberries, mandarin oranges, almonds, baby spinach, cucumber, and a guava vinaigrette. I don't think I've ever had a guava vinaigrette, but this thing is like beautiful. They said that the cucumbers themselves are like representative of the dragon scales. I'll be honest, I don't know of any dragons in Seuss lore, Seuss land in Seuss lore. And if I'm being 100% honest, if like, if Seuss, if we got Seuss as like a trivia category and we were at a bar doing like bar trivia, there were 10 questions, we might get to them. Like, we're just not up to date on our Seuss trivia. So if you have any like fun facts, let us know in the comments and also, I, let me know what the dragon's from because I have I have no clue. But let's see if the salad's good. Wow, this is my new favorite salad in the park. Like this will be a go-to if I'm ever craving a salad. There's a ton of food in here. Like there's so much quinoa. I just can't get over it. But all the fruit and everything it really balances each other out. That guava vinaigrette. I was afraid it'd be too sweet, but it's really not. The mandarin oranges mix in perfectly. I love spinach. I love this. And this is a, it's just like a great vegan vegetarian option that they offer here. I didn't really expect to like this, I'll be honest. I was like, man, that's pretty. I probably won't enjoy it because I don't eat a lot of fruit myself. But everything in here mixes so well together. This is my new go-to salad. I am very happy that I am the one that gets to try this next food item. It is the chicken and biscuit. So it's crispy chicken tenders and a peanut shaped biscuit drizzled with hot honey and curly fries. This is so Tennessee, like chicken and biscuits. It is very Tennessee. And like, this looks just like a peanut, like a circus peanut. It's, this is so cute. I'm excited to eat this. One of the team members also said that instead of being like, an actual biscuit it's more in the realm of like a liege waffle so like it's called chicken and biscuit but it's also kind of like chicken and waffle ish with a hot honey i mean this has got to be good but i feel like for the first bite you gotta like get the get the chicken on there like get it all in one 
This is really starting to feel like another Minion Cafe where pretty much everything is successful. Like I'm really impressed with all the food so far and this chicken biscuit, all of the flavors just go really well together. Like the hot honey, you get a little bit of spice from that, but it's sweet enough. And then the chicken is like good and flavorful. My first bite, I got a little bit too much of like the waffle and not enough chicken. So I feel like half the waffle with like a tender on top is the, the correct proportions, uh, but I will definitely be ordering this again. This has gotta be one of the prettiest like plates of food, like just the, the preparation of it. It looks so good. This is the Magician's Meatball Cone. So it's just a, a cone with pasta and meatballs. And this is like garlic pastry bread. Oh, it looks so good. This is one of the dishes that they also offer a vegan version of. So you can get the same thing with like meatless meatballs uh, if you would like. So that's a great option that they have. I like ever since they set this down in front of us, I have been dying to dig into it. So let's, oh, let's see. It's spaghetti and meatballs. I mean, it's good. Uh, I very much like this. It's a lot of food for what it is. I guess technically it's cavatappi and meatballs because it's not actually spaghetti noodles, but it's like, this is like you went to Olive Garden and like, you know how you get like spaghetti and meatballs and then like the breadsticks and you dip it in the sauce. They've just already done that for you. Like it's, it's pre-dipped, it's made, it's just ready to eat. Yeah, it's giving like, when you're here, your family vibes, like it's just, it's, it's basically all gone. That's that's trademark, so we can't really say that. But yeah, it's fine. It's like it's. I was gonna say deconstructed. It's like a constructed meal that you're already eating. Just some pasta. They just put the breadstick in the pasta, or the pastas in the breadstick. Yeah, that that's the way. Ever since I saw this, I've just had an innate urge to like pick this up and like eat it like an ice cream cone. But I'm a lady. Like I I can't be doing this. Up next, we have the popcorn shrimp box. It's kind of like a play on words because there's popcorn shrimp in here and then there's also like popcorn popcorn and then they fill in the empty spaces with pearly fries. This is like three of my favorite things ever. And all of it is like garlic flavored. So just add a fourth thing that I love right there. I'm most interested in the shrimp. Like fried shrimp is just one of the best things in the entire world. So I know I'm gonna love it. It's a little bit spicy. Like I wasn't prepared for that. I guess like the seasoning in here just has a little bit of spice in it. The flavors are good. Like I like everything individually, but I have two kind of problems with it. So the first one is that it's a little bit greasy. So you have the fried popcorn shrimp, you have french fries that are fried, and then the popcorn is coated in like a garlic butter. So it's also kind of on the greasy side. And then all of these items are flavored in the same way like they're they're all in the same like flavor palette so there's no like diversity there's nothing different everything that you grab out of here and eat has the same note like i said it's all good uh but there's just no like variety in it. but i will say when we first got this i fully expected like the bottom like quarter of this cup to be like solid and not hollow like i didn't think the food went all the way to the bottom so i feel like this is a decent amount of food like all of that is filled with french fries shrimp and popcorn if you ate this whole thing you would be stuffed up next is what i would argue is the most famous food item from the seuss universe it's either this or like who hash but this is the roast beast sandwich we all grew up wanting a roast beef sandwich and i'll say this We've had this one before, but I think this is a different recipe. So they used to have this seasonally around the holidays, the hula days, as some would say. But my favorite part about it is it comes in two sandwiches. You got like a little bitty mini sandwich up here, and then like the big big boy sandwich. Little boy sandwich, big boy sandwich. That's how we're gonna distinguish them. The last time we had this, I distinctly remember this sandwich being my favorite part of the entire meal. I think I'm gonna start with the, the little boy sandwich. I don't know what else to call it. I feel so proper holding this, like you got the pinky up, everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fun to eat. Um, I would almost call it like a little baby patty melt. Perfect if you got a very small child. I'm not sure at what age kids can eat, but maybe if they're really small and they're, they're allowed to eat patty melts, this would be perfect for them. 
And now for the main feast. This is the roast beast sandwich. Um, yeah, like I, I won't rhyme anymore today, but this is a mushroom meatloaf with shaved ribeye, cheddar cheese, crispy onions on a pretzel bun with curly fries. The curly fries are just on a plate. I think this is different than it used to be. I think it is. Let's dig in. <sighs> I have finally been disappointed. Um, I think I like the old recipe better. I don't. I just remember liking it. I'm not a big meatloaf fan. I didn't realize it was meatloaf until I just read read the description. My mom used to make meatloaf, and I pretended that I liked it just because I love my mom. Hi, mom. Love you. Uh, but I've just never been a meatloaf person. Like I don't, I don't get it. Like just, I just want a burger instead. Like we don't, and I don't know really what the difference is. But I know that I like burgers, and I don't like meatloaf. If you like meatloaf, you're probably gonna love this. There's just something about, I don't know. Like I just never, never cared for it. Everything else, like the onions and all that stuff, great. I love a pretzel bun. It's just the meatloaf. Like the main part of it for me isn't great. But if you love meatloaf, probably give it a try. You know, I'm about to eat my words and, and this cheesecake because this is the green eggs and ham chocolate cheesecake. I just said that the roast beast and uh, the hoo hash might be the most famous Seuss food, Seuss universe, you, you know what I'm saying. Might be the most famous and I totally forgot about green eggs and ham, which is probably like the one thing. I remember asking my mom to make green eggs and ham. She never did. Wow. I love this so much. I think this is the first time I've ever had a chocolate cheesecake, and I don't know why, like I'm asking myself why I've waited so long. It goes perfect together. And also, this cute little fork, I don't know if you can see it. Don't know if it'll focus on it. It's adorable. It's a cute, like it just goes perfectly with this. It's like so aesthetic. Like the whole dish is just like, just so good looking, but it tastes just as good as it looks. Also, I'm very curious about what the egg yolk is, or if it's just like a real egg yolk. Like they're just, I thought, to be honest, I thought I could pull it off. Egg. I thought I, I, thought, I, thought I could just get it off. Hey now. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Is that brownie? Like, oh, it's so dark. It's like dark, rich chocolate inside of there. I'll save you this little bite. I was about to put it in my mouth because it's so good. Like, this, I think this is a brownie. I'm pretty sure. I really thought at the end of Tyler's take, I thought he was just gonna like put it in his mouth without like thinking about it. I'm glad that you didn't though because I really wanna try this. Delicious but I have no idea what that is. Um, it's sort of like almost cake poppy, but like almost like a brownie version of a cake pop. I don't know, that's really delicious though. I am also gonna try the cheesecake. I hate cheesecake. I hate cream cheese to be specific, but Tyler was saying that this one isn't very cream cheesy and it's chocolate. So fingers crossed, I'm gonna give it a go. I thought maybe you'd like it, honestly. <laughs> it kind of made me laugh that you were just so repulsed by it, but I think it's delicious. Um, it's almost like it gives me more of like a mousse taste to me than like cream cheese. I don't really taste the cream cheese, but I also I like cream cheese. And it just hit me. The crust is probably what that egg yolk was, the green egg yolk. I don't think they're just making like little egg yolk shaped brownies and rolling them up in white chocolate. It's probably just, probably just more crust. Up next, we have a caramel popcorn cupcake. This is so cute. Like, it's almost giving me like killer clown vibes. Uh, so definitely works in like the circus theming. I, like I almost feel bad like eating it, like putting my fork into it because it's so pretty, but we gotta. Wow. Um, I like, I'm extremely happy right now. This cupcake is delicious it's so simple like there aren't any crazy flavors in it but it's just really really good and i feel like you know how when you watch like the food network 
and you're watching like a baking show and you see the people like brush like the syrup or whatever onto the cake i feel like they've done that here like it's so moist and the cake itself has that like caramelly slightly salty flavor to it this this is delicious and like i hate to say this but this might be like the best cake or cupcake in the park now. that's insane like that is truly insane the caramel corn gives it like that little bit of crunch that sometimes like really sweet desserts need you're right like the caramel everything down the bottom like you can see it down there it is so moist and that buttercream is the most airy buttercream i've ever eaten in my life it's like eating a cloud a very sweet cloud it is just like so fluffy wow like i don't need any more temptations in life and here we are and it's in the form of a popcorn cupcake what a vice we're sitting outside now and you may be thinking to yourself that means this video is over nope there is one more item this is the contortion corn dog it's an italian sausage with pepperoni mozzarella inside of a corn dog shell i guess that's what we'll call it i don't know why i'm so excited about this maybe because like three of the people that we saw in there said this was their favorite item period so what universal is doing and the reason that we're trying it outside is they have a mobile pickup order, sort of like they do at Minions Cafe, where they have an exclusive item that you can only get at that mobile pickup item, uh, mobile pickup window, and this is it. This giant corn dog. The looks we've been getting as we've been showing this off. The bag's trying to blow away. It's been funny. Let's try. Good mercy, me. This thing's delicious. You want to talk about something that's like stereotypical fair food? It's this right here. It's this corn dog. Like every once in a while back home when the fair would come to town, we would crave fair food and this would have this would have been a killer. And, and like I mean it in all of the right ways. Like fair food's good food. It's just you know what I'm talking about. It fits perfectly with the circus theme. Like the mozzarella, it's melty. There's a little cheese pull. I don't know if we got it on camera, but there was like a good cheese pull, the, the pepperoni, the sausage, all that. Got the little marinara to dip it in. This is so good. Like, it shouldn't work. Like, it, actually, it does work. It should work. What am I talking about? It's all really good foods fried. So it, it should work. It should work. Okay. I have two thoughts after trying it. First one, the sausage is a little bit spicy, uh, which is good, but it did sneak up on me a little bit. And number two, I was saying earlier that like pizza toppings are good on everything, corn dogs included. Like I'm not a corn dog fan, uh, but it's an Italian sausage instead of a hot dog. So this is, it is much better. And like, I don't know, this honestly might be in the running for the best food item. And now to be fair, a lot of the other food items that we tried weren't like fresh. They weren't super hot uh, because we had to get photos and videos of everything. And this one did like just come out of the fryer. So it has that going for it. But this is so good. Like the flavors, the flavors are all there, like in the best way. A couple other little quick notes about Circus McGurkis. Since the renovation, it is now like mobile order only, just like Minions Cafe. So when you walk in, you'll go straight to a table and order on your phone. If you don't have the app and you can't download it, they do have a counter in the back where you can order right there. But if you want to check out our Minions Cafe video, you can do that right up here. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you all in the next one. Bye.